Well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. It is Saturday, August the 15th. We are in day 14 of 21 days of prayer and fasting. And uh, as people are coming on, I want to remind you that we have a guide for you to use, if you would like, that is on our website under resources, 21 days of prayer. And uh, there's a little PDF so you can download that. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, Man, I'm, I'm really excited about this weekend and all that, that God has planned for us this weekend, That what we're uh, going to be doing in church and in prayer and everything else. So good morning, Adelia. Carolyn, see you guys there. Um, I really am excited, hey, Miss Kathy, uh, about this weekend because today our prayer focus, if you look in the guide, we are focusing on our local schools. And uh, the suggestion that, that I wrote in the guide for you is... Uh, to take time to look on a map uh, near you. So like you can get on your phone and, um, you know, like if you got an iPhone, get on maps and just put in schools. And so my suggestion is, is to find the schools that are right around where you are, where you live, or if you're working today, um, and, and just take some time to pray for their administration, their teachers, their other staff members, uh, the lunch ladies, um, the custodians, but also for the school board that oversees them. And elections are coming, and so that the right people are put into the right places. And and for those that maybe don't directly affect schools, but indirectly affect schools in leadership and government and that kind of thing. And I want to remind you that tomorrow night, we are part of praying over our schools. So we have been part of helping organize. We have every school uh, Lake Sumter and Citrus County, the uh, there uh, three different counties. Every school is going to have people praying at their school, public and private, that uh, we have organized. So we'll be praying at Leesburg High School tomorrow night at 7 p.m. But you can go to any school. If your kids go to a different school, uh, if there's a different school close to you, there should be a group of people there praying. I know in the Leesburg area we've had different churches that have taken on uh, the, sort of the leadership of being there and leading prayer. And so uh, join us in that tomorrow. Really, really excited. Want to give honor to uh, Sid Brock up at Heritage Community Church in Fruitland Park because Sid is really the, the heart behind this and is the one who put it all together. And so uh, really, really grateful for uh, what he's put together. You can actually go to schoolprayer.info and they've created a website and um, so you may want to do that. I believe also the Facebook's up uh, their page. I haven't, I haven't looked at it yet, but that just hit my mind uh, because you might want to see uh, if people post any pictures tomorrow night um, and be a part of that. So just consider being a part of that. Um, and especially today that you would pray for local schools. <clears throat> I was thinking about, excuse me, that I've talked a whole lot to Principal Randolph, prayed with him. Um, listen to him, and, and even uh, he's asked my, some, my thoughts on some things. And, uh, boy, trying to define success uh, for those guys right now is, is, is a little bit crazy. Um, a lot of kids that are going to stay home and do either Florida Virtual or live, the teachers are having to adjust to doing class over a computer um, you know, or by video. So men really need to cover them in prayer, in, in fulfilling what they're supposed to do in that. So that kind of led me down a thought process. My brain right now is, is stuck on the concept of purpose because that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow in church. So for those of you to either join us online or live, we're going to talk a little bit tomorrow about choosing purpose and, and, and purpose and meaning and success. Um, and so that led me to I want to read you a verse out of Luke. And it is uh, Luke chapter 18, verse 31. And it simply says this, Jesus took the 12 aside. Now I want to stop for some moment and set the, set the scene. So Jesus grabs the 12 disciples and pulls them away from the crowd, has a little, has a little huddle here, right? Pulls the team together. And this is getting towards the end. They have been through, you know, years now of casting out demons and seeing him perform miracles and having opposition from the Pharisees. I mean, they have, they've been through it. Like, like they're, they're, uh, 
their experience. Let's, let's say at this point, Jesus took the 12 aside and told them this. We are going to Jerusalem and everything that is written by the prophets about the Son of Man will be fulfilled. That is a crazy statement, and my thoughts went to, what were they thinking at that point? Like, what does that look like from the disciples' point of view? So I started thinking, so like, okay, if Mike was a disciple, and I was standing there in that huddle, and Jesus says, all right, we're going, and everything is going to be fulfilled that is written about me. Wait, 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 everything? So like, you're about to take over the kingdom. You're like, what is this going to look like? So we're about to take over. Wait, we're about to be in charge. Man, I wonder if I could buy that piece of property in Jerusalem once we set up and we're in charge. And Like, where did their brains go? <clears throat> Come on, we're typically very selfish in how that's going to affect me and what success is actually going to look like. Um, and man, my, my brain went all kinds of places of personal agendas and thoughts of what success would look like and uh, that everything's going to be fulfilled. And finally, maybe we're not going to have to travel as much. Maybe we're going to get to, you know, have a nice place and settle down and I could do this and I could do that. And, and how immediately our brains start going to the concepts of purpose and success based on our version of purpose and success. So that kind of led me to think yesterday, I went uh, and um, I, I love to go fishing and I typically like to go on these charter boats on off days like a Friday when there's quite, not quite as many people and all, but just to get away. Um, so yesterday I caught 22 fish. Um, one uh, fish I posted on my Facebook page. You can see I made up my profile picture yesterday. Pretty good size red snapper. I caught 16 red snapper yesterday. Um, the guy next to me caught a seven foot nurse shark. It was amazing um, having that whole <clears throat> experience, even though I didn't catch it. Uh, it was great standing there with him and, and uh, kind of helping him a little bit with the fight. And, um, and so here's a question. Uh, was the was the fishing trip successful? Would, would you define it as successful? All right. Well, let me give you a little more information before you before you answer that question. What if I told you I came home with zero meat? Like I brought nothing home. Would that change your definition of it being successful or not? All right. What if I told you? that red snapper are now on the the um, um, the list of endangered species and you can't keep any. So every time you pull up a red snapper, most of the time, everybody on the boat groans, oh, there's a red snapper because we can't keep it. Would that sort of change your perspective? What if I told you I had meat in the freezer already from a previous trip. And the only thing that I caught was the same kind of meat. So I didn't want it. I put it back for it to, to grow bigger. Would that change your idea of success on the trip? And the reason I bring that up and the reason I think that it's so important for us to kind of process this is I think sometimes um, maybe we have a certain idea of what we think success is going to look like when maybe God has a completely different perspective. And I think that's what's going on here with the disciples. Um, so funny because I posted that and got a whole bunch of people that made comments. And there was every comment from, um, hey, I like fish sandwiches. Or, hey, can I have some of that meat? Or can I have, because they had a certain perspective. Just that picture gave them a perspective. Um, you know, that there's a bunch of people that think I came home with a whole bunch of meat. And then I had another guy that posted, because I did hold the fish out, and when you do that, it, it does make it look bigger in perspective. And he his comment was, nice use of perspective to make it, the little guy look bigger, and wink, wink. And I laugh, because people are always going to poke holes at what you do. Um, anyway, the, the point being is, 
what is success and what is um, purpose. And, and, and sometimes I think we get twisted a little bit in our thought process, as I think maybe the disciples were, as to what purpose is, as to how to define success. And I think the right way for us to define the success is why, is the why. Like, why am I going through this or why am I doing this? Because if you had asked the disciples, um, if everything's going to be fulfilled, what does success look like? I doubt any of them would have said Jesus was going to die. I, I doubt any of them would have brought up him being unjustly, giving an unjust trial, being beaten and flogged and going through all this. And yet that would have been the definition of success from Jesus and God's perspective. Like he, he knew. He, he knew what was going to happen. And so what I want to encourage us with and what I hope to encourage you with this morning is that maybe we're defining success incorrectly because here's what I'll say to you. It was an immensely successful fishing trip because the why for me was, number one, my cell phone doesn't work out there. Got me? Like it's, it's, it's Sabbath. Like I get away and I can't. I, I, there are no text messages to pop up. There are no phone calls. There are no spam calls. There are nothing. It's just Mike away taking and having peace. I love to fish and I caught a whole bunch of fish. So it was an immensely, I love the ride out. It was a gorgeous day yesterday. Just looking at the water, uh, watching the dolphins, you know, play in the, in the wake of the boat just simply getting outside and doing. So I wonder if, I wonder if sometimes God has got us in places or going through things and maybe we have a misalignment to go back to a word we used yesterday. We have a misalignment in our minds with what success is. And, and so the whole idea behind 21 days of prayer and fasting is to get away from our version of life, our version of success, our version of whatever it is that we're going through right now and say, God, what is success in this? Maybe God finds great purpose in where you are right now. Even if that's not the perfect quote unquote place for you. Even if you're going through something tough right now, Maybe God would define it as successful because he's building something in you. Because God is always more concerned with our character than he is our comfort. And so I want to encourage you today to maybe consider, hey God, let me strip away all my thoughts of what success is supposed to look like today. Like here we are on this particular Saturday, and what does a successful day look like today? Is it just completing the task list? Is it being able to do nothing and, and be you know lazy and sit on the couch? What if God has a different version? What if God has something specific he wants you to do today? Maybe it's not huge, maybe it's small. You know, I had a really small conversation with an older gentleman uh, who was fishing next to me yesterday. And I think I recognized that some of the purpose yesterday was in that very small conversation. Nope, didn't preach the gospel to him. Nope, we didn't talk about God. But I did speak some encouraging words to him. I did say some things to him just that were complimentary that I thought, when was the last time he had a compliment, right? When, when was the last time? And so maybe God is doing something beyond your task list, your definition of success. And, and, and what he wants us to do in this 21 days of prayer and fasting is to get away from our own thoughts and to get away from the things of this world that distract us and align ourselves with his version of success. God he is always working always doing something, um, 
always speaking. Remember, God doesn't have a speaking problem. It's just us that has a hearing problem. And so I, I challenge you today that as we pray for the schools and we pray for their success, let's pray for God's version, right, of, of success in that. And it may not look like our opinion. It may not look like our version, kind of just like the disciples. But then also within our, our own life, God, help me define success today uh, by your heart and your mind. And um, I was thinking about the verse that said, and God will give you the desires of your heart. I think we misread that. I think most of the time people think that God's going to give you what you desire. And I read that to mean he's going to give you the desires. In other words, he's going to put in you his desire. He's going to put in you to want what he wants. And so, man, let's let's pray that way today. Let's pray that, that uh, success is defined uh, on Jesus' terms, right, on, on the Holy Spirit's term, and that we get in alignment with whatever that is today. So uh, let me pray for you, and then maybe you take some time and pray based on what the Holy Spirit spoke to you over the last few minutes. So God, thank you for this day. And uh, we do pray for our schools and uh, the success thereof by your definition. Uh, Father, it's, um, it's tough for our teachers and our administrators. It seems to be uh, just kind of a lot of pressure, kind of a lot of stress. And of course, dealing with the virus and the questions of, of people getting sick and kids getting sick on top of trying to educate and, and all that. So would you give wisdom and we pray that your success would come. And I pray specifically for Mr. Randolph and the administration there at Leesburg High School. And, um, and God, would you do a work in us as, as we all go and pray at the schools tomorrow. And God, we pray that you will align our minds and our hearts with your will. That I might lay down all my definitions of its success that I might put away all my ideas because yours are higher. Uh, because your word says that you do immeasurably more than I can think or imagine. And so we stand on that today. We trust you today. Uh, we look to define today based upon your purpose and your meaning that you might receive glory and that those around us might see you because of the way that you work in our lives. And so, Father, we thank you for this day. Pray that you will guide us. Give us ears to hear, courage to follow uh, what, what you might speak to us today. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great Saturday.